in yet another one of these $25,000 preseason tournaments, we saw one of the most clutch plays that we have seen so far. It was made by Attached to get his team from around 10 into around 11. So in this video, we're going to watch round 10. We'll see how it all folds out. We'll break it all down. This is on Crewmate. So search and destroy on the map Crewmate. It's the map with the big plane right in the middle. You'll notice that in this 6v6 scenario, there's not a, a lot of aggression going on here. If you're a player that likes to throw smoke and, and really hit a flank or something, it's tough to do in a 6v6 tournament, but you can still see me, some incredible plays, especially towards the end of rounds, and that's what we're gonna do here. So as we go ahead and bring up this, this map here, you can see the top left, you have Apathy, Impulse, Study, Attach, Saint, and Major Maniac. They are down 4-5. They are on defense, however, going into this round 10. You got Simp, Envoy, Blast, along with Mutex, and Rallied in the top, right? They are on offense. All they have to do is plant the bomb, and you'll kind of see how this breaks down. So without further ado, let's go ahead. Let's press play. So it looks like Envoy. Yeah, Envoy is the one that gets the bomb. And again, we talked about this earlier, but when it comes down to making plays on a map like this, it's really tough because everything's wide open. This really isn't your typical three-lane Call of Duty map, right? In fact, there aren't really a lot of those in total. Stoner 63 got a pick right there. So that puts that team up 4-5 or 5-4. Five to four. All I need to do is get a plant. But what you'll see is that's what a lot of people do. So as we bring up the minimap right here, you can see that this blue team on defense, they're pushed up. They took control of the B-bomb site. And that's what you have to do. You can't just give it up. If you give it up, it's going to be really hard to retake. That's a tough retake to try to get inside that tiny corridor and try to defuse after the, the attacking team has planted there. But... On the flip side of that, what you're seeing out of the attackers, so you see a couple up here, a couple here, so you have four or five right there. What you see out of them is they're just playing kind of passive. They're just trying to get a pick. Now, Blast did go down, so Blast went down up here, top side of the screen. So that's a little bit tough. If you're attacking here, you already are in a 5v5, so now if you go down to a 4v5, it makes it a little bit tougher. But you can see that this is super methodical, right? It's just let's slowly push up the map, try to gain map control. So... As we hop back into this one, look at the trophy systems all over the place. I mean, there's not really a point to use anything else other than trophies. So you see basically everybody running trophies as of right now. But slowly but surely, we're moving up the map here. And it's just it's just a waiting game, right? You want to make sure that you're checking all of your corners, moving up the map, slowly but surely getting there. And we'll see what happens here. So, again, pushing up. It looks like they're playing underneath beat and... This is the thing. The easier site on this one is to push up on the top side of the map towards A. And that's kind of what you're seeing right now. Fellow is underneath a plane. He gets a pick right there on study. So now you can see the bomb pushing, right? So as we go ahead and look at this minimap one more time, you can see Rallied is up here by the A bomb site. And as that happened, Envoy had rotated all the way back through to make his way over to A. So it's just a little bit easier to push up on that side of the map because it's a little bit more walled off. There's not as many places that you can get killed from. So we'll press play, get back into this. And let me tell you, this play out of attach is, uh, it's coming soon. Rally trying to make his way in. He could honestly catch attach here. This is it. This is Rallied has a chance to kill him right there. It doesn't happen. Oh, it wasn't attached. My bad. It was Apathy. So, Apathy is in a 1v3. Apathy versus Philo. Envoy goes down. So, now it's Mutex and Philo. All they have to do is trade this. And Apathy, he doesn't have to plant, right? All he has to do is just protect the bomb site. So, right here, he sees Mutex. He does chase him. Philo tries to trade it out, and he gets turned on. I mean, that play is insane. You can hear Miles casting it. He was casting this event. But watch this play right here. Apathy comes forward, gets the first, turns around, gets the trade on Philo, and just like that, it takes it to around 11. I mean, that's, that was incredible. So now we're 5-5, five, five, and we'll see what happens here. So now 
apathy, attach, saint, major maniac, impulse. So now their team is on offense, and you're going to see the same thing. So just as we look at the mini-map, as it gets going, it's a lot of gain a little bit of map control and then see what happens. Now, the difference here is that if you're Apathy's team, this is basically for it, right? You have to win this round. If you lose this round, then Simp and Envoy's team ends up winning this tournament. So I like what they're doing here. It is unbelievably risky to push this bomb site because essentially where they're looking right now, this middle corridor, so the one of the wings is over on this side, the other wing is over on the left hand side. So as they're approaching that mid corridor there, once you get past that middle hallway on the other side is where the bomb is, but there are a ton of places where the defense can be setting up there. So that's what you're going to see right here. But at least they're being aggressive. They're not just sitting back waiting for picks. They pushed up mid map and they're going to try to go for it, see if they can get map control right away. Holding the flank down quite well. They've got trophies up, an opportunity now to maybe get it down on B. The defense is much more focused in towards A though. They've got two players. Now, one thing I will say real quick, and I believe this is Major Maniac. Yeah, it is. So as we're looking at this, one power position here, or one position that was made is that as this attacking team started back here, you'll see that Major Maniac pushed up and got underneath the plane. Once he gets underneath the plane, now you can kind of start to hit a flank a little bit. So once under the plane, he's actually pushed up, and that's the arrow that you see right here. So the only thing once you're here, I've played this probably seven or eight times search on this map. All you have to do is just worry about this line of sight. There could be, there could be somebody tucked in that corner there. There's nobody there right now. And there are boxes right up here that you can sit on. So if you just watch these two lines of sight and there's nobody there, now all of a sudden you can come forward and you have a chance to shoot people in the back. Now, it is 6v6, so there's a lot more of this that's being um, – there aren't quite as many lanes there to 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 push as, as would normally be if it was 4v4. But that's the one person that I was kind of watching as I was going throughout this and watching it live. I instantly noticed that Major Maniac pushed forward. And if he could round the corner and get a two-piece, now all of a sudden you're in a 5v3. Even if he gets traded out, you're putting your team in a 4v3, and that's pretty easy to win. And you can see this is the exact line of sight that I'm talking about. Um, something happens relatively soon also i believe the round timers were a little bit off in this the round timers were set at two minutes and i don't think it was supposed to be that high i think it was only supposed to be somewhere in like the 130 range as it normally is but right there mutex gets a pick on study and instantly they go up 5-4 and they're on defense so major maniacs pushing forward fellow sees him right there Tries to make the play and it doesn't happen. That that FAMAS from Major Maniac is huge, but he pushes forward. And once he gets here, he has control of this. Unfortunately, he jumps out and he's not able to get that pick right there on blast. Even if he was able to get that pick, I watched Envoy do this also. Envoy was on this side of the map. You can see the nine arrow down here as we go ahead and zoom in on it. This is Envoy right here. He was pushing behind and flanking here. So even if Blast doesn't get this kill right here, it's going to end up being traded out. But as it stands right now, they're in that 4v3 scenario, and the bomb still isn't down yet. So that's the situation we're in. And the rest of this will be, well, we'll let you watch it here. But it pretty much goes as it should. Saints gets the kill on Rallied. This AUG is absolutely unbelievable. If you haven't used a burst weapon yet, they're incredible. And right there, I mean, it's pretty anticlimactic, but let's just go back. Let's watch the last 10 seconds or so. Saints get the kill on Rally. All that's left right here is Attach and Saint. They know where they are. So as they're pushing up down at the bottom of the screen, Envoy got the kill on Attach. So Attach again, the same sort of pace that Major Maniac was trying to push. He came over here, and then he was just trying to push up, right? If Envoy's not there, say Envoy's somewhere in this part of the map, then Attach could have come forward and gotten a couple kills here on flanks, but Envoy rotated over after Major Maniac got traded out there from Blast, and he just stayed over there. So 
right at about the same time. Envoy gets that kill on attach, and then we push forward. It's all on Saint. He ends up dropping, and that is the tournament. So I just wanted to go through and make sure that we were pointing out that play from Apathy because that was an incredible play. It's not very often that you have a two-piece like that as time expires with somebody clutching up in a major way that goes on to basically extend well they didn't win the tournament but they got really close in that round 11 had it not been for that it would have been 6-4 and the game would have been over so just wanted to make sure that we were keying in on that but if you're new around here you enjoy these sort of competitive breakdowns as soon as pro team scrims start i'm going to be breaking down every single day all the maps we're going to be talking about control and hard point and everything else so make sure you hit that subscribe button leave a like it really helps out the channel and with that guys thank you so much we will see you in tomorrow's upload